let's look at some recursive queries that involve concatenating strings. Language itself is recursive. By that I mean that I can write a sentence whose subject contains a clause that's a sentence. And that sentence within it can likewise have a subject containing a clause with another sentence. So recursion is a very natural way to express the structure of the grammar of a natural language like English. Okay, so the one piece we'll explore today is that noun phrases can contain relative pronouns that introduce relative clauses, and those behave like sentences. So you can say the dog chased the cat, or you can say the dog that chased the bird chased the cat. Or you can say the dog that the bird chased chased the cat. So this relative clause is a sentence but instead of having a subject and an object, it has that as a stand-in for one of those. So in this case, that is the subject, chase the bird is the object. In this case, the bird is the subject, chase that is the object. By the way, you can also omit the that entirely and just say the dog the bird chased, chased the cat. So the bird is chasing, the dog is chasing the cat. Now this relative clause can contain any kinds of nouns you want, even nouns with relative clauses. You can say the dog, the bird, the cat chased, chased, chased me, and that's well-formed English sentence. If you stare at it long enough, it might even make sense. A famous example of this kind of nested relative clause construction was an interpretation of the famous chant, bulldogs, 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 fight, fight, fight which is saying bulldogs, the bulldogs, the bulldogs fight, fight, fight. Okay, how can SQL help us here? Here we have a small program from last lecture. And in this program, it prints out all possible combinations of a subject and an object that are different. But this doesn't have any relative clauses. To get those, we're going to need to build them. So let's start with a with clause, where instead of just simple noun phrases, we want compound noun phrases, which will include a phrase and how many levels of embedding we have. Now we can, of course, still have a noun phrase that's just the dog, which includes only one step in the recursion. We'll union that with a recursive select statement that says what I want is subject dot phrase, so that would be like the dog, that chased the object. Now where do we get these subjects and objects? Well, let's use compounds as the subject. We can't use it again, so we'll use nouns as the object. And why not specify that the subject phrase does not equal the object phrase? Now this will actually run forever, because we haven't said when to stop adding more relative clauses. So to do that, we need to include account for how many times we've recursed and specify that n has to be less than some number, such as 2. Let's keep it simple at the beginning. Okay, so now we can select s.phrase chase o.phrase from compounds as s. Let's keep the object simple. And let's see what we get. Interesting. The bird that chased the cat chased the bird. The bird that chased the cat chased the cat. Well, that's obvious. The dog that chased the bird chased the bird. Now, if we relax this a little bit, say to four, we might get some even longer sentences. 
Like the dog that chased the cat that chased the dog that chased the bird chased the dog. And here we can see how recursion helps us model language more effectively.